Hello again. I'm Pete Gerlach. I am the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self improvement lessons that I've learned from 31 years of being a family therapist, and I've had well over a thousand teachers. I want to offer you today something that I first read back in the 1980s from three well known therapists Paul Watzlawick. Uh, John Weakland and Richard Fish. They proposed an idea that originally came from a mathematician who said there are two levels of human change. I want to pass on to you what I learned from them today. Have you ever had trouble changing something uh, as in a quote bad habit? or crack your knuckles, or find yourself chewing with your mouth open, or not balancing your checkbook, or leaving your socks on the floor, or small things, large things, not telling the truth, not being on time, uh, drinking too much, eating poorly, not getting dental checkups. Think of your favorite, quote, bad habits. Have you tried through willpower to change your bad habits? Did that work? There are books and websites and programs designed to try and strengthen willpower because often willpower alone does not work, meaning does not produce desired permanent change. Why not? First try to describe what is willpower? How would you describe willpower to a 12 year old? I would say something like, well, you just make your mind up, uh, maybe you write it down on a piece of paper, or you tell somebody that I'm by, from now on, I'm going to stop biting my nails, or whatever. So it's something about your conscious mind that doesn't work. The implication is something blocks what your conscious mind wants to do. This video offers an idea about what is this mysterious block. What the three men I just mentioned uh, proposed was that there are two kinds of changes. They call them first order change and second order change in terms of human behavior. I would prefer to call them behavioral changes and attitude changes. If you say, I'm going to stop cracking my knuckles in public or at all. That's a conscious decision, and it involves changing your behavior, nothing else. An attitude change says, I have to stop uh, cracking my knuckles, or overeating, or working too hard, or not enough, or being late, or not telling the truth, or using drugs too much, or whatever, because it's not healthy for me, and I value my holistic health going from self-neglect to valuing your own health genuinely, not out of duty, not out of fear, not because somebody tells you you have to, or you ought to, or they're going to leave you or scorn you, but because you want to. That is an attitude change. How do people, meaning you, change attitudes? Apparently, we can't do it with willpower, conscious decisions, alone. Why not? In my experience as a therapist and an observer of human nature, there are two things that cause people to change their attitude. We do change our attitudes. That's a given. I suspect you have your own examples in your life and other people's lives. People really do make genuine attitudinal shifts. Um, I'm going to stop eating red meat. I'm going to go to the dentist every six months, um, whatever. In my experience, there are two reasons for attitude changes, attitude changes that really work, that are not meant to please someone else, but that come from within. One is a trauma. Um, the global term for that is hitting bottom. People who have a major trauma, for example, killing someone while driving drunk. Major trauma. 
if someone does that, that can change their attitude, saying, uh, to, saying, today I had my last drink. Seeing a loved one die of cancer who smoked a lot, today I am going to stop smoking for good. Some massive trauma hitting bottom in some way can trigger genuine, long-lasting attitude changes. The other thing that the three men I quoted did not know about back in the 1970s and 80s, but that people are beginning to learn about now, is we all, we humans, are run by personality subcells, and we are not crazy. Very few of us have true multiple personality disorder. All of us have a group of dynamic, well-intentioned personality subcells. Our attitudes are brought to us by our dominant subcells. These are like the members of a sports team or the members of an orchestra. They each are unique. They each have their own priorities, alias attitudes. And the dominant subcells in our personalities give us our attitudes. So one subself may say, I need to exercise once a week. Another subself says, ah, it's too much work, it's no fun, it's boring, you can do it without it, don't do it. That can be called your procrastinator subself or your saboteur subself. We all have regular, normal subselves like this. There's nothing logical about it. Subselves are born in, from childhood trauma. Other videos in the series of Lesson 1 Break the Cycle uh, concepts will show you what that is. My point here is the second way to break bad habits is to cause an, a lasting attitude change by reorganizing the subselves that run your personality. That may seem pretty far out to you. There is a very concrete, specific way to do that. It's called Inner Family Systems Therapy, IFS. I've been practicing this as a professional therapist for 19 years. I've seen it work on scores of people who wanted to change something and had been baffled before. Using IFS, they made lasting changes in a comfortable, safe way. Lesson one in my free, non-commercial website will explain how to do inner family system therapy, free your true self to run your life. Um, try out this concept. It won't mean much to you unless you actually try and identify who are the personality subselves that run your life. If they are a false self, they will persistently cause you not to be able to change your, quote, bad habits. If you free your true self, you can, in fact, make changes that you desire that will last. To find out more about this, I invite you to view the related videos in this Lesson 1 Break the Cycle series. Notice what you're thinking and feeling right now before you make your next decision. And by the way, who's running your life? Who's going to make your next decision? A true self or a false self? Have fun.